Welcome to this introduction to the Cambridge Masters in Conservation Leadership. My name is Chris Sandbrook, I'm the Director of the Masters, and it's my pleasure to tell you a bit about our course today as part of the Virtual Open Day programme. So the Masters in Conservation Leadership is designed to train the next generation of conservation leaders in the applied leadership and management skills they need to bring about positive change for conservation. It does this by providing interdisciplinary academic training drawn from more than six university departments across the University of Cambridge, combined with a strong focus on applied leadership and management skills, much of which is delivered by conservation practitioners who work in those roles every day. We engage practitioners in the delivery of all aspects of the course, particularly through experiential learning, which takes place through group consultancy projects and individual professional placements to end the year. And I'll tell you a bit more about those uh, shortly. Every year, the course attracts a diverse cohort of around 20 students from all around the world. They come from multiple different sectoral backgrounds and bring together an incredible wealth of skills and experience. And every year, our graduating students tell us how important it has been for them to be part of this diverse cohort and how much they've learned from each other, as well as from the formal taught elements of the course. The Masters is delivered by an incredible range of individuals and organisations. We have over 60 different contributors who give lectures, host projects and mentor students. Most of these are drawn from the Cambridge Conservation Initiative, which is an extraordinary partnership between the University of Cambridge and nine international conservation organisations, which are all based in the Cambridge area. And you can see the logos of these organisations on the screen here. Where necessary, we also draw in external individuals who come from the government sector, from business, and indeed in some cases, our course alumni, who can bring particular perspectives that are relevant to our students. The course is primarily supported by a core team uh, of four individuals. There's me, uh, the course director, and I work very closely with Dr. Howard Nelson, who's our lecturer in conservation leadership, and who is actually employed by Fauna and Flora International, one of our partner organizations. Then we have a, an important team behind the scenes, uh, Shelley Balderson, who works as our alumni and communications coordinator, and Lisa Harris, who's our program administrator, who, who keeps the, the show on the road. And you can see pictures of us all here on the slide. The Masters is divided into two broad elements. There's a program of taught modules, and then there's the experiential learning, which takes place later during the year. Um, the taught modules, we have five of them. We begin the year with a module called Conservation Leadership Problems and Practice. And this module introduces students to leadership theory and some of the big topics in conservation leadership of the day. And in this module, we actually hear from several of the chief executives of the Cambridge-based organisations, giving their perspectives on the topics that matter to their organisations at the moment. We then move into a, a set of three modules which have a, a, a kind of hierarchical structure, beginning with a focus on leading self, thinking about understanding your own strengths and weaknesses, um, how you interrelate with other people, and really promoting self-reflection as a crucial practice for achieving resilience as a conservation leader. We then move on to think about how we work with other people and organisations, how we can inspire our colleagues and the kind of management skills that we need to be effective at things like strategic planning, uh, financial management, um, and, and creating structures within organisations that will be effective. And then finally, we look at leading systems. How can we change the external systems, political uh, governance um, out there in the world, which will make a difference to achieve conservation objectives? And running through this, we think a lot about innovation in the Masters. We have a module on, on innovation for conservation leadership, which is primarily delivered by colleagues from the Judge Business School, where we think about how we can achieve innovation to bring about the kind of uh, cat catalytic change that needs to happen to achieve conservation goals. All of our teaching takes place in the David Attenborough Building, which is the home of the Cambridge Conservation Initiative, a dedicated building housing over 500 conservationists from multiple different organisations. Within the building, we have a dedicated teaching space uh, which hosts all of our classes, and students can just walk out the door of our, of our teaching room and straight out into the building where they can interact with um, hundreds of conservationists working um, in their different organisations. As I said, the experiential learning is a really important element of this course where students can put what they've been learning in theory into practice, uh, working directly with conservation organisations on projects that really matter for them. There are two elements to this within the programme. The first is a group consultancy project where students are divided into groups of four or five 
to work with a conservation organization on an innovation challenge that they are facing at that time. These are intensive six week long projects which have often produced extremely important and interesting results which have been taken up and put into practice by their host organizations. And this uh, project is connected to the Innovation for Conservation Leadership module. The second uh, experiential element is the individual professional placement, which takes place at the end of the year. So this is a four month project where each individual student goes and works with a conservation organization on a leadership challenge which matters to that organization. In some cases, these are based on ideas that students have developed themselves, but more commonly, they're actually based on projects which the organizations have put forward where they've identified a challenge that they need help uh, in addressing. And again, this is a chance for students to put into practice what they've been learning and really cement the new leadership skills that they've developed throughout the year. And we very often hear from our students that these experiential projects are, are a real highlight of the program and really help to make sure that they can take away from the course applied skills that they can really put into practice back in their, in their own work in their future careers. As well as these um, formal parts of the course, the modules and the experiential projects, we also offer a wide variety of additional um, unassessed elements to the programme which really help to separate it, I think, from, uh, from other equivalent courses. All of our students receive individual one-to-one -one mentoring by a senior leader from within the Cambridge Conservation community. So we put a lot of work into understanding the needs of each individual student and pairing them up with an appropriate mentor who they will then meet several times throughout the year and actually work together um, on developing a personal uh, plan for what the student will go on to do after they graduate. Each year we host several really senior global leaders in conservation to give what we call a conservation leadership lecture where the speaker reflects on their own career and what they've learned about leadership along the way, followed by a drinks reception and a dinner with invited guests. And this is a chance for students to get incredible insights into what an individual at that level can tell them about leadership, but also to develop their networking skills as they meet guests and, and, and mingle with them over the course of an evening. We have other professional networking events, uh, including one hosted by Fauna and Flora International, which gives students um, specific training in, in networking skills, which they can then put into practice in a live exercise. We undertake uh, residential and one day field trips uh, from Cambridge, usually beginning every year with a three-day field trip to, to Norfolk, uh, where we give the students the chance to, to do a lot of bonding and getting to know each other, while also starting to think about different forms of leadership and learning a little bit about conservation here in the UK. And in addition to all of these things, as students at the University of Cambridge, there are myriad opportunities to uh, attend seminars and all sorts of other events taking place in Cambridge, which is really an incredibly rich learning environment. We do not see the Masters as a one-year experience. The course might be over within 11 months, but we see this as part of a lifetime journey as a conservation leader. And we've taken a lot of uh, steps in the last few years to provide a lot of support to our alumni through the Cambridge um, Masters in Conservation Leadership alumni network. This is now a thriving global network with uh, representatives in more than 85 different countries around the world who've attended the course since it was founded in 2010. We now provide ongoing support to this network, which also has its own uh, council and coordinates its own activities and is becoming a real global voice collectively for conservation. And we've also now in a position where we're able to provide some funding to support alumni projects um, to enable them to put their ideas into practice. So we see the alumni network as a very important element of this program so that it continues to support you throughout your life as a conservation leader. So what kind of students are we looking for as you consider whether or not to apply for this course? We're looking to um, identify established professionals who have at least three years of relevant experience. Um, so not students who have just finished or are finishing their first degree. We're looking for students who have several years of professional experience to move them on to that next stage in their career. However, this does not necessarily have to be experienced in a conservation role explicitly. We've had a lot of successful students in the past who come from uh, the business community, who come from roles in government, um, who uh, perhaps have been doing something like journalism, which is relevant to conservation, but not uh, exactly focused on conservation. The main thing that we're looking for is to be sure that you're planning to devote your future career to achieving conservation goals. And so that's more important to us than exactly what you've been doing prior to applying. 
We definitely want to identify students who have leadership experience or potential. So, you know, if you're somebody who has already been working in leadership roles or who is, you know, clearly on a trajectory towards uh, being being a leader in conservation, then that's the kind of person that we're looking for. And I want to be clear here that we're not only thinking of leadership in terms of being in positions of authority. We're thinking of leadership as being about change, people who can make change in the world, which can be multiple different ways. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you've been managing large teams or budgets or in a senior management role. You might also be somebody who's bringing about change uh, through your writing or your activism or in other, in other walks of life. We're clearly looking for people who are incredibly passionate about conservation. We all are, everybody in this building is, and we're looking for students who have that passion and that will motivate them to keep working in this field uh, through the rest of their careers. We do need applicants to have a good undergraduate degree uh, with, a, with, a, with a good result. There can be sometimes some flexibility around this, particularly because we recognise that many of our applicants are applying from countries with a relatively limited um, educational opportunity uh, and which we would not want to hold them back from the opportunity to come and study at Cambridge. So please do uh, talk to us if you have any concerns about your previous uh, qualifications for applying. Uh, one thing which we can't compromise on at all is we do require students to have very good English language skills. You can find details on our website about the exact scores that you need under different um, certification systems for English skills, but it is important that you do have those skills before joining the programme. You don't have to have the um, certificate to confirm your English skills at the point of application, uh, but you do need to have that confirmed before you can be uh, formally registered for the course. So uh, if you're not already uh, if you don't already have that in place, please do make it a top priority if you're considering applying uh, to, to study with us. Um, and then finally, thinking about uh, funding and logistics associated with applying. We have several full and partial scholarships, and these are particularly available for applicants from the Global South, from highly biodiverse countries, uh, which do not have the resources to support a student to come and study at Cambridge. So please don't be put off from applying by uh, the, the cost of studying with us because we may well be able to find a scholarship that would suit your needs. Full details of our scholarships and how to apply to them can be found on our course website and you can see the, the link there. And I would also strongly encourage you to look at alternative scholarship schemes which might be available, for example, through your own uh, country or government or, or through external uh, sources as well as those that we have control of here within the university. Applications open each year in September and the deadline to apply is in early December. We have a single deadline for all our applications so you must apply by early December if you want to be considered for admission in the following October, so the academic year that begins in October of the following year. Please begin the application process early. For example, at the point of application you need to already have in place uh, letters of support from your referees uh, and several other documents such as um, academic transcripts, some of which can take quite some time to put together. So please don't leave it to the last minute if you're thinking of applying. Uh, start talking to referees and getting together your paperwork as early as possible. If you have any further questions, um, please do get in touch with me or indeed with Lisa Harris who can answer a lot of questions about the logistics of the application process. Both of our email addresses are available there and we might also get the chance to speak with you at a Q&A session as part of the open day. So I hope this has been useful and I very much look forward to receiving your applications if you feel that this is the course for you. Thank you.